I want to thank you for joining me for episode number 15 of Ms. Mo Mama. My name is Jenny and I live in Sedalia, Missouri in the United States where I am making in the Midwest. I'm recording my video on Tuesday, September 29 for upload on Thursday, August, or October 1st. And my program is about yarn crafts and food and whatever else I decide I want to talk about. In today's episode, I have a winner for Jenny's birthday giveaway. I um, started a project and um, did some testing on another potential project. And I made an asparagus chicken fricassee and an autumn apple cake. So if that sounds like stuff you're interested in, then stick around, and we'll get to it. So, let's get this show on the road. So now it's time for Mama's giveaway announcement. And I'm really excited because I have a winner. Before I get to the winner of my birthday giveaway, Kim Bamford! Kim Bamford, you're the winner of my 100 subscribers giveaway and you haven't reached out to me yet. I've tried to get in touch with you, but it's, I can't, there's no way I can do it on YouTube. So, um, you have until November 18th to claim your prize. Uh, so, reach out to me via email. Um, it's midmomama2 at gmail.com. So there's that one. And then, so now it's time for me to announce the winner of Jenny's birthday giveaway. What is the winner going to receive? Well, the winner is going to receive three skeins of this beautiful yarn. It's canopy worsted by the Fiber Company in the colorway parakeet. This yarn is 100 grams and you're going to get three of them for a total of 300 grams. One skin is 200 yards so you'll get a total of 600 yards and it's 50% baby alpaca, 30% merino and 20% bamboo. So my winner was supposed to follow the raffle copter link in my last show, episode 14. And they had to do three things. They had to tell me their first name. They had to tell me their email address. And they had to tell me happy birthday. So the winner is, we're going to do a drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. And the winner is Leanne. Leanne! for you. So, Leanne, I have already sent you an email, so all you have to do is respond to my email with your name and your address, you know, your first and last name and your address, and I will get your prize out to you. You're going to get three skeins. It's the same yarn of the sweater that I'm wearing right now, okay? I made a sweater. And when I when I was brought the yarn, I needed eight skeins to make the size I needed. But then I lost a lot of weight, and I didn't need eight skeins to make the sweater. I only needed five. So I'm just giving my leftover yarn from my pat from my project. And they're unopened skeins. I haven't caked them or anything, and they've been in the shipping package. Uh, that they arrived in ever since I got them. So I've only been taking them out one at a time as I've needed them. So they're in good shape and they're ready to become some, somebody else's um, wonderful project. So Leanne, I'm grateful that you participated and I, I look forward to hearing from you. Congratulations, Leanne. I'm going to get this out of the way. 
Oh, and just as a disclaimer, YouTube was not a sponsor of my contest and participants release YouTube from any and all liability related to my contest. Alright? Alright, well we're done with giveaways for a while. I don't have anything more that I want to give away at the moment. Um, but don't, don't, don't fret, because I will have more giveaways at some point. I've, I've had four in a row now. I did the Christmas in July, and then I did the 100 subscribers, and the 200 subscribers, oh, and the 300 subscribers, and then the birthday giveaway. I think I'm giveawayed out for a little while. So we're going to take a break from giveaways, but, you know, stick around, because this isn't the end. Um, probably Christmas. That's a good time to have a giveaway, don't you think? I think. So, so let's move on to the next segment. Well, now it's time for Mama's show and tell. <clears throat> and the last Thursday was my birthday, September 24th. So I received some presents, but I'm not going to show everything. I'm only going to show a couple of the things that I got. But um, my daughter got me some clothes. She got me a couple of tops and a couple of dresses. And they were summertime clothes because, you know, that's what's on sale right now is the summer summertime stuff. So you'll get to see some of that stuff perhaps in the springtime. Once it gets warm, because now it's fall, and it's all about the sweaters and the darker colors and stuff like that. So I'll be wearing my sweaters a lot. Um, <clears throat> I guess I should tell you what I'm wearing for show and tell. Um, this sweater, of course, was made with the giveaway yarn. Um, the pattern I made with it is called Drambuie by um, Thea Coleman. It's a short sleeve sweater. It's it's um, and it's very well made. It's got it's got an off center cable down the side of it. It's got a boat neck and it's um, knitted in two pieces and then it's seamed together and then you add the cuffs of the sleeve which match the um, ribbing on the neckline and then there's uh, the same type of ribbing along the hem. And it's a very nice sweater. I really enjoy wearing it and it's a pretty color on me, I think. So, that's what I'm wearing. Um, let's see, back to my birthday. My cat's making noise. I just, I get distracted by noises. <laughs> but, um, let's see. Well, my folks gave me some cash I haven't spent yet. And Scott got me... I'll show you. Scott got me a copy of the Hand Weavers Pattern Directory by Ann Dixon. Um, I wanted to do some research about loom weaving. My husband is him wrestling around. Say hello to everyone. Hi everyone. This is my husband Scott. He. Sorry. It's okay. Is there something that you wanted to ask no, me? Just... Okay. You just wanted to be on TV too. I just want to be on TV too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway. <laughs> I had asked for some a weaving book. I, I put a couple on my wish list just because I want to do some research about it. I'm kind of interested in perhaps maybe get, getting a, a tabletop weaving loom, but I'm not I'm not sure. And I thought, well, in order for me to gauge my interest in it, I asked for a couple of reference books just so I can read up on it and get some information about it. I'm still not altogether certain that I'm ready to take the plunge into getting a weaving loom. 
but I'm, I'm interested enough to read about it. So I got this book, um, or Scott ordered it from me. And so I've been enjoying browsing through the weaving patterns and stuff. I'm, I'm really impressed with it. I'll just show you a page. It's, it's not, I don't want to show you the pattern patterns, but just give you some glimpses of the type of stuff that, that it shows. And there's that. And well, here's some here's some weaving patterns here. And so it's been it's been a joy. I've been enjoying browsing through it. But I still don't know if I'm if I if I want to or not. I think I would enjoy it though, so we'll see. But I'm glad I have this book, it's a good reference. And, um, you know, if I decide that I'm, I want to get a tabletop loom, then I will... I'll just take some time to think about it. I If I do an additional craft, I want it to be a yarn craft because I want to stick with what I'm familiar with. But I'm really, I'm really just happy with my knitting and crochet. So, you know... I may or may not weave. I'm just interested in reading up on it is all. And let's see, I got an electric skillet and you'll see that in my cooking segment because I used it yesterday or on Sunday to make dinner and, uh, and that was really nice. And I got a set of box lights. You can't see them but that's what I'm looking at. That's why my face is so bright. Because I was having lighting issues when I was filming and I have a ring light but it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. And so I think these box lights are a little bit better. Except I think they glare off of my glasses. I sure wish I didn't have that problem but... I don't know what else to do about it other than buying anti-glare glasses and those are expensive. So I'm not going to buy brand new glasses just for my TV show. Or my YouTube show. <laughs> and I see I got a reading lamp to put next to my chair in the living room over there. Because it's very, very shadowy where I sit and I have a hard time with my knitting. And my crochet because I'm I just I'm sitting in shadows all the time and it's hard to see but boy that light is adjustable and I can angle it just so that it's you know focused on whatever I'm working on and it's been great I really like my new lamp but that's it I just got a bunch of boring stuff because you know I'm a, I'm a grown up and and it's the boring stuff that I'm wanting <laughs> I didn't get a new car, I didn't get a new house, I didn't get a mink coat. I just got stuff I, I felt like I needed. And it was a lovely birthday. Let's see. Oh, something else I got. <clears throat> Remember last episode I was talking about my celebrations binder I got and how you know, I thought it would be a good tool to use to keep track of birthdays and stuff. Because I, I wasn't really digging the planner thing because, you know, I would plan for a while and then I'd draw, fall off the wagon and not plan. Well, there was a planner ad that caught my eye. It was identifying um, dateless planners. And I'm sure other companies have them, but this one I particularly was drawn to because their focus is on prayer and in improving your prayer life. So what I ended up getting is a prayerful planner and I like this because it's not predated. So if, if I come to a where I'm not using it, 
But then I'm like, oh, I want to get back into it. I don't have to buy a whole new planner. I just pick up where I left off here and I'll be just fine. So um, I really like this. It's um, it's not spiral bound. It's just a re regular book binding. But it lays flat. It lays flat just like that. And it's, it's, it's not predated. So I have October pretty much set up. But I'm only I'm only preparing one week at a time because this is this is this week although it's still September October starts on Thursday so I have my week planned out plus it has um, full month planning that you can do so there's that there's the full month and this is what the week looks like this is what the week looks like. So I thought it was good. And then to start off your week, it has this um, reflections page, sort of, where you can reflect on the week that you previously had. You can do sermon notes for sun church on Sunday. And you got a place for Bible study notes for Sunday school. Now I teach Sunday school, but that's okay. I you know, I learn I learn, even though I'm teaching, I'm learning. So that's that's important. And then you know, you get access to um their um they send you little emails. So they have this little prayer prompts thing that you can go you get them for free. You just print out the prayer prompts, and those help you guide your prayer life. And they also have uh, Bible reading plans that you can get for free. But I'm I'm currently doing a reading plan right now, so I'm, I'm probably not going to do the October one, which is um, you're going to read um, Proverbs all the way through because there's. 31 chapters in Proverbs and 31 days in October so you can read a chapter a day and, and get the whole book of Proverbs in which is very good, I've done that before um, so um, but with the prayer prompts is what I'm wanting because I want to my, my goal for having a planner and I don't know why I feel like I need a planner to help me well, because nothing else works I guess but I, I just want a more fruitful prayer life with the Lord. Um, I do pray, but I am more of a an instant prayer. I kind of pray throughout my day. You know, if 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 something comes up or some some, I feel prompted to pray. I pray for people right then and there, right? Well, I want, I want to carve out some time for intentional, worshipful prayer, where I'm just focusing on God's greatness, you know, what Jesus did for me on the cross, um, you know, thinking about His majesty and His power and His greatness. Um, I want to spend some time with the Lord thinking about those things exclusively, how great my Lord is. Because I feel like, I feel like the way I pray is, I mean, it's effective, and I know He hears my prayers, but I don't feel like, I don't feel like they're brought to Him with the right attitude. Uh, I, I, know, I know we can cast all the cares upon the Lord, and He wants us to talk with Him and share with Him, but I also would like to practice a certain amount of reverence um, rather than just issuing prayer requests, you know. Um, I just want something more worshipful, a, a worshipful prayer time. Um, in addition to, you know, the people that I'm shooting up at him, you know, for needs and, and situations and things of that nature. So. That's really all I wanted, and I just, because this was a, 
has a prayerful thing. Um, that's why I picked this one up. So we'll see how how long it lasts if I'm if I'm disciplined enough to stick with it. But you know the nice thing about it is because it's undated. If I if I if I don't follow through to the end, at least when I'm ready to go back to it, I don't have to buy an entirely new planner. I just pick up where I left off and go. And so in the future, maybe that's the route I need to take until, you know. And if I'm starting in October and ending in September, how many calendars do you know of that start in October and end in September? I don't. I don't. But if you have a, an undated one, you can start whenever you want to. And and it's you know it's got flexibility built in, and that's a feature that I like. <clears throat> well, that's all I have for Mama Show and Tell. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Mama Crafts. And I haven't been working on the usual projects. I did a little bit on my diamonds and but I didn't I didn't bring my bag up to show you and you know y'all know what a diamond looks like so so I did a few but not not very many. But I'm feeling kinda I don't know, just like uninspired right now with the projects that I have going on. And I'm trying to, I just felt like I needed to invigorate my crafting mojo. So I thought, well, let me cast on a few things. And that was what started me, you know, the Sedalia um, shawl. But I haven't worked on that. And then I thought, well... Let me try something else. So I went back into my craft room and I have this, well, I'll hold it up so you can see. It's called the Huga Shawl. It was a sheep just cow of 2017. And it was a it was a pattern designed by um, Kirsten Ballering. Uh, from Hack Marak and it is it's called Huga H-Y-G-G-E and I had ordered two kits I had ordered the jewel kit and I ordered the pastels kit and I thought well it's autumn so I'll make the um, jewel kit Let me tell you, so this is this is Huga, and it says it's a noun life moments brimming with happiness, creativity, comfort, loved ones, favorite things, beautiful places, or two to create well being, connection, or warmth. So that's what Huga stands for. What it, what it means. Um, but they have you start out by making a gauge swatch. So I made a gauge swatch. In fact, I made three gauge swatches. I made one and, and then it was a half inch too big all the way around using a size 7 hook so then I went down one size to a G and it was still too big so I went down to an F and I think I'm at the right width but now it's too short I'm not getting 19 stitches and 19 rows for 4 inches. It's more of a rectangle now. 
So I've decided what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the 7 and just go from there and just be happy with it. So, so the gauge swatch, you take your gauge swatch and let me tell you about the yarn. There's, there's uh, 10 skeins of sheep just uh, stone washed. And this is the color uh, Smoky Quartz. And it's 50 gram balls, you get 10 of them. It's 78% cotton and 22% acrylic. And then you get a variety. You get um, 11 different um, balls of Katona. And Katona is, uh, they're 25 gram balls and they're 100% mercerized cotton. So it comes with um, two of one color and then the rest of them are all different colors. So I think these two. Yeah, these, no, those are not the same color. No, none of those are the same. There's two of the same color, I just don't know which one. Oh, here we go. These two are the same. So you get two of this color, and then the rest of them. I, I guess I'll show them to you. So there's a cream, and this looks like a... There's three different blues. Teal colors. Um, this is more of a greenish teal, and this is more of a bluish teal, and this is probably a true teal. And you've got two of these medium pinks. And then you've got a mauve. And you've got two other purples. You've got more of a plum purple. And you've got more of a magenta purple. And then you have a gold and a green. And then um, in the kit also is... Um, one, this heart-shaped um, progress keeper and a wooden button that says sheep just hygge on it, a moose charm, and two snowflake buttons. I'll, I'll, let me hold it. Get two of those. And then you get a... Uh, needle for weaving in ends and for stitching because not only is it crocheted but it is also um, embroidered using a, kind of like a cross stitch uh, type of pattern so so that's pretty fun I think and it came in a little gauze drawstring bag for the little accessories. But I think I've decided what I'm going to do is, I mean they say, they say if your swatch is too big then it might use up too much yarn and you might not have enough to finish your project, but I don't know, I don't, I don't want it to be too short. Is it more important for it to be a perfect square or is it more important I don't know what's more important. Um, so I think, I think I'm just going to go back to the seven hook and just be happy with that. And if it's not enough yarn, well, I'll live. Right? I don't know. So, anyway, that's all the further I've gotten is the gauge swatch. Maybe I should... I don't know. Maybe I should just put it aside, which I've done. I put it aside so I can think about what I'm going to do. I don't want to run out of yarn, but you would think that if they created the pack, the kit, then they would have enough yarn to complete the project with. I don't know. So, 
Anyway, I do want to make it because it's a beautiful shawl. I'll show you a picture of it in the, you know, up above, over top, however you, however you call it. So anyway, I was feeling a little bit blue about my huga. It wasn't, it wasn't making me feel good like the word huga is supposed to make you feel. So, what did I decide to do? I decided to go to something basic. And I decided I just I just want to make a basic hat with worsted weight yarn, and that's what I did. So I went to Yart. Yart. It's a um, it's a pattern by it's called the Yart Simple Chemo Cap Slash Beanie by Natalia Elam. And it's just a basic cat. It's got a ribbed um, um, cuff, a ribbed cuff on it, and then it's just stockinette. And you can make it, you know, skull cap, or you can make it slouchy. And so I'm using um, Lion Brand uh, Heartland. This colorway is Olympic. Olympic blue and I made some good progress in it. Let me get out of my bag. I guess I better tell you what my bag is. I have a bag. This is the bag I keep it in. This I think the name of this was Woodland Critters. It's got fox and owl and deer. Well, it might be an elk. I don't know. But it's got woodland critters. And it's kind of got like an autumn looking thing on it. And inside the bag is a... It's kind of a green paisley. But it's sewing on Etsy. She's got an Etsy store. And I've gotten stuff from her. I've got several bags from her because I, li I like them. But this is just a simple drawstring... Um, sock bag I keep a hat in so I used um, Knitter's Pride Dreams I started out with um, size 7 which is 4.5 millimeters on a 16 inch uh, interchangeable circular needle and um, and then I switched to size 8 which is the five millimeter needle and this is what I have so far I have um, the cuff which is ribbed and it's pretty and it's nice it'll, it'll fit and then it's just stuck in it all the way around all the way around all the way around and I think it's pretty and it's very nice and I've enjoyed working on it quite a bit and you know what this is my first time using Heartland and I love the way it feels I want to make a bunch of stuff with Heartland that's a wonderful yarn I don't know what it's made of I bet, I bet it's I know it's a acrylic but I don't know if there's any wool in the blend or not I guess I should look at it huh let me look it won't take me a minute to bring it up. You all probably know it's one of the most popular yarns out there. Yes, I don't percent acrylic, but it feels nice. I like it. And I like that little marled look to it. You know, it's not... I mean, it's... I mean, there's no doubt about it. It's true blue, but there's a little bit of... Uh, like a heathered appearance to it and I really like it and uh, you know look how far I got I started working on this Saturday I think I think it was Saturday I got almost completely done with the ribbing and then I finally I finished it Sunday 
And then I got working on the the main head part. And I took it to knit night last night and I was so content. I was so content just making the simple hat. My heart felt good. And I found my huga. See? I couldn't find it with with the huga wrap, but I found my huga <laughs> with my yart hat. So that's just fine. And I'm thinking I'm going to give it to one of my boys. I thought, well, maybe I'll make another hat when I'm done and give them each a hat. My oldest son, he'll be 25 on Halloween, and he's got blue eyes. And I'm thinking this hat would look nice with his blue eyes. My middle boy, he turned 23 um, in August. And he's got brown eyes like I have. And I have some, I think I, I think I might make him a striped hat with brown in it, is what I was thinking. But I think this is nice, and I think the other, you know, the other thing is nice. And so I think I'm just going to make a couple of hats. Maybe I'll even make my husband a hat, although I made him one last fall. Um, but he has a tendency to lose stuff, so maybe I'll make him a hat too. Although he doesn't, he doesn't wear wear hats a lot. But my boys live in Alaska and they don't wear hats either. But that's okay. I'll make one and send it to them, and if they wear it, okay. And if they don't wear it, well, they just have to walk around with a cold head. But I'm enjoying making this hat. Uh, I think it's just what I needed. I think maybe I was just... <clears throat> Not that making diamonds was hard, but it wasn't... I don't know. I guess maybe I'm bored. And I still didn't... I, I still haven't found that bag of extra di diamonds that I lost. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe I'm feeling down because I like there's an entire skein of diamonds. Which means that if I'm out, then I have to make another entire an extra an extra entire skein of diamonds. And here comes Audrey coming in from work. Hi Audrey. I had to start over because I was having lighting issues with the daytime, but I think it's better now. How come you don't have this light up? Um, because I wasn't thinking about that. Well, your background looks dull. No, my background looks fine. It's just, it's just my camera, it's not, I, it, it's more vivid than what it appears in that little viewfinder. So bright. It is. Okay. Okay, if I cook something? <clears throat> yeah, I'm just going to be too, super duper loud. Yeah, I'll be clinking pots and pans. And okay. What are you making? I don't know. Okay. What, what do you want? Macaroni and cheese. Yeah. I would imagine so. I know there's at least one Velveeta chosen cheese in there. Up against the wall. And I know there's some craft way back in the back on the left. Do you want... Hot dogs and a pasta side dish. Yeah, but I don't want a pasta side. I just want macaroni and cheese. Okay. Well, do you want me to make it now or do you want me to wait until you're done? No, you can make whatever you want to. We're going to watch the presidential debate later. You want to watch with us? Okay. <clears throat> Talk to you later. Goodbye. <clears throat> so that concludes Mama's Mama Crafts. I don't have anything else I'm working on at the moment, but I think I think I I found I found my huga making my hat. So so that's good. At least at least I. 
I found some sort of something to make me feel like I had something good going on. So sometimes I I struggle, you know. I, I want I want to make all the things, but sometimes I just feel kind of overwhelmed. And I tell you what, I've had some disappointments. I gosh, I. <clears throat> I'm devastated that I haven't enjoyed making the socks. I wanted to enjoy making socks because I want to continue to make socks. <clears throat> and I just haven't enjoyed making them. So, I haven't given up though. I will finish the socks, but I'm just thinking maybe two at a time toe up isn't, isn't my way. I just had to find the technique that agrees with me and then make them that way forevermore. I just have to find it. I just have to find it. I've done the DPNs and I've done and now I'm doing uh, two at once toe up magic loop sock. So I'll try something else and see what works but right now I just I didn't feel like working on them this week. So that's it for Mama Crafts. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Mama's Pattern Showcase. And here, in this segment, I feature five patterns um, that are featured on the Ravelry Top 20. Okay? And, I, um, and I've been um, alternating. So last week, I, or last episode, I did... Um, two crochet patterns and three knit patterns. So this time I'm going to do three crochet patterns and two knit patterns, okay? So, um, the first pattern I would like to showcase is called Waves to the Point Shawl by Elissa DeSena. And it's number one on the crochet top 20. And what I'm going to do is I'm featuring the patterns that are featured elsewhere, like on their own personal website and stuff like that, okay? Because I know a lot of people are drifting away from Ravelry, and so I don't want to tell you exclusively patterns that are only available on Ravelry. And I, I tell you what, there's a lot of them that are only available there. But there are other avenues to obtain patterns and so I'm trying to facilitate people um, who may not want to go there, but they still want to knit the hot, trendy items that are that are new um, to the program. So I just figured I would just showcase those. So as I said, this one is um, the first one is "Waves to the Point Shawl" by Alyssa Desina. It's number one on the Crochet Top 20. On Ravelry, it is $5, but you can get it from free on her website, which is Strings and Cuddles Blog. And I have a link to the pattern itself on the webpage, and I have a link to the webpage homepage, okay? Um, let me tell you a little bit about the pattern. So the waves to the point, y'all is crochet using fingering weight and an H, H hook 5 millimeter. Let's see, the Waves of the Point Shawl is a collaborative project with Teresa at Fuzzy Whatnot, who graciously provided the yarns to complete this shawl. Check out her site to see all the kits she dyed for this shawl collaboration and also her other gorgeous yarns. This pattern uses U.S. terminology. It's a triangle shawl that is worked from the top down. And it's a beautiful shawl. And it's number one. It's number one. And it's free on her website. So get some of this fuzzy whatnots, fuzzy fingering, and flawless fingering. And get your H hook. And get busy on this shawl because it's adorable. It's very pretty. I like the I like the um, 
the different there are some examples of what other people did, but if you look on her website, um, she got a really pretty picture of the shawl. So, there it is. Check that out. Waves to the Point Shawl by Alyssa DeSena. The next pattern I would like to showcase is called, let's see, let me see. It is, um, Letitia's Holiday Cow by Rosina Plain. Uh, Letitia's Holiday Cow, it's not a cowl, it's a cow. Crochet along, C A L. Uh, but it's number three on the Crochet Top 20. On Ravelry, you can buy it for $5.30. But you can get it for free for a limited time at Rosina Crochets, okay? And she has a Facebook group where she is hosting the crochet along. So if you want to make this Letitia's Holiday Cow, which is a blanket throw, you can you can make it into a throw, a bedspread, or a baby blanket. So it's available in small, medium, or large. Using DK weight yarn. Um, you'll be using a G and an E hook, four millimeter and three point five millimeter. It's available in both U.S. and U.K. terminology, um, but the free version. Um, part 1 to 5 will be available from my website for a limited time only. Okay, so go to her website again in my show notes. Um, the pattern, if you click on the pattern link, it'll take you to the pattern. If you click on her website link, it'll take you to her homepage. Um, it says the price stated above for the Ravelry is uh, it represents a 50% discount which will last for the duration of the cow through uh, the 23rd of November um, but this price will increase um, after that um, so this this is a crochet along so you will not get the full pattern all at once. It will be released in separate weekly parts as listed below. So if you if you pay for the pattern, you'll get all nine parts all at once. But if you want it for free, then you just work on it. You get all nine parts. So it's going to start on September 28th, which was yesterday. It started yesterday, and so you're going to release the different parts um looks like every few days except for on she'll release parts four and five on the 19th of october but um then you'll have another four weeks worth of patterns after that and it says no part five is an optional plain border which you may wish to add to the small blanket rather than waiting for the full border in part nine. The blanket is beautiful. It reminds me a little bit of the Huga wrap in in that it's it's got different patterns um, throughout. And she's got one that's a, a, a sample of a colorful one and then she's got a sample of one that uses more earth tones. And it's lovely, very beautiful pattern. So if you want to do a crochet along on Facebook, go ahead and check out that pattern on her webpage and get the pattern for free. I think that that would be time well spent. It's a beautiful pattern. I just, I I don't do crochet alongs just because I I feel pressure. I feel pressure when I do an along, so I just do stuff my own way. But that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful blanket if you want something a little bit fancy for the holidays. It would make a beautiful gift. 
highly recommend that. The next pattern I would like to showcase is the Harvest Moon Pocket Shawl by Carrie M. Chambers. It's number four on the crochet top 20 list. It's a free pattern found on her website, um, Crochet with Carrie. Now those pocket shawls have been very, very popular this season. So it seems like, seems like I've been featuring them um, fairly regularly on my episodes. So this is a different one. It's not the same one that I've been posting. It's a different one. But it's called the Harvest Moon Pocket Shawl. Um, it is, she's got it categorized as a sweater cardigan rather than a wrap. And I guess, yeah, I guess it would be more something that you would, I guess it would, I think it's more of a wrap than a cardigan, but that's fine. She uses Vanna's Choice from Lion Brand, uh, which is air and weight, and a size J hook, which is a 6 millimeter hook. Uh, one size fits most. Uh, it's in U.S. crochet terminology. And the pattern is free on her website. She doesn't charge you any money. And the name of her website, once again, is Crochet with Carrie. And the link in my show notes, you'll get the link to um, the, the pattern and the link to the home page so that you can browse around her website. Well, that's a beautiful pattern. Check that out. I always say the same thing. That's a nice pattern. Check it out. Well, that's it for the three crochet patterns. So I'm going to feature two knit patterns. Um, some of you may have heard that um, Kat Bordy passed away recently. And so um, she, um, she got one pattern out there that's, um, that's new. I guess it was released at, um, as a result of her passing away. She died of cancer. And so, um, the pattern that was released is called Rio Kalina Cowl. Yeah, Rio Kalina Cowl. By, excuse me, by Kat Bordy. It's number five on the Knitting Top 20. On Ravelry, it's free. It's a free Ravelry download, but you can also go to her website, Kat Bordy, um, and get it for free on her website, too. So, um, and the cowl is pretty. Let me see. Let me read about it a little bit. <clears throat> a spontaneously joyful knit, the real Kalina cowl combines ribbing and cables in a most delightful way. Knit flat with a short seam to form the cowl. This piece frames your neck in a warm and cuddly manner. The geometry of the seam creates a fold down edge that makes the cowl look more complex than it is. A note about knitting. Directions are very straightforward and are really more of a recipe than a pattern. You will discuss you will discover that you can modify this pattern for different yarn weights and different amounts of yarn quite readily. Perhaps the most enchanting aspect of this cowl is that you knit it without being held accountable for, to specific cable counts and placements. Cat encourages you to be free and to follow the river as it takes you on this journey of delight. This pattern is available free through Kat's website. She has knitted with many of her traveling knitters groups and now offers it to all in hopes that she will see thousands of knitters finding their own journeys as she prepares for her journey to the next plane of existence. Scroll down about halfway to find a hypertext link to the pattern in the middle of the story. So that's nice. So she loves this pattern um, as a fair, as a fond farewell. <laughs> um, 
and uh, so um, and the fact that it's free is very kind. It's very nice. For it's knit with worsted weight, but as as I mentioned, it, you know you can make uh, make it with any yarn weight you want to. She used uh, US seven. 4.5 millimeter needles, um, but it's it's a lovely cow, and I think it looks terrific. So check that out if you get a chance. And finally, the last pattern I would like to showcase um, is called Frog and Toad by Christina Ingrid McCowan. It's number 9 on the Knitting Top 20. The patterns are available for free on her website. Her website is called Frog and Cast. Let me read a little bit about it. It's a little softy pattern of a frog and a toad. You make the frog in green and you can make the toad in brown. You can use fingering or you can use DK weight. She uses needle size US1, which is a 2.25 millimeter needle. The frog is nine inches long and the toad is seven inches long. It says, hi, for more details on this pattern, please visit frogandcast.com. So the link to her pattern is in there. Let's see. Ooh, that's an expensive pattern. She wants $15 for the pattern. I thought it was free. Why did I think it was free? I went to her website. Let me, let me double check. I, I thought it was free. No, nope, you have to buy it. Tells you all all the materials that you need ahead of time. How much yarn you're gonna need for each color and for clothing and the gauge, um, and finish dimensions. So yeah, you have to buy the pattern, but I guess you get the two patterns, so it would be fifteen dollars for both patterns. Fifteen dollars is a lot of money, but that's okay. It's a, it's a beautiful, uh, they're actually quite adorable frog and toad. So, you know, if you want to make a little rustic um, stuffy, then this would be a good choice. And, you know, maybe you might find that it's worth $15. I do not know. I don't, I'm horrible at stuffies. I don't make them very well. So I, I wouldn't pay $15 for a pattern. But... But they, they're adorable. They're absolutely adorable. So if you're in the market, go to her website and buy her pattern. It's only available on her website. She doesn't have a purchase on Ravelry. So. But that concludes um, Mama's Pattern Showcase. You got the, the Waves to the Point Shawl by Alyssa DeSena. You got Letitia's Holiday Cow by Rosina Plain. You got the Harvest Moon Pocket Shawl by Carrie M. Chambers. You got Rio Kalina Cow by Cat Bordy. And you got Frog and Toad by Christina Ingrid McCohen. So I hope you enjoy looking at those patterns. And let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Mama Cooks. And for supper on Sunday, I made asparagus chicken fricassee. And it was delicious. I thought it was delicious. My daughter liked it okay. My husband thought it was okay. He liked the chicken part, but he didn't want to eat the asparagus part. And he ate the noodles. He ate noodles and chicken. And he had some leftover green beans from a previous meal because he didn't want the asparagus. And that's just fine. He doesn't have to like everything I fix. But I, but the rest of it was good enough 
for him. He enjoyed it. He enjoyed it other than the asparagus. But I got the recipe once again out of the Best of Country Cooking, year 2000. And, um, and I found it to be um, a good recipe. It uses dill. I made, um, I made a fricassee once and it called for tarragon. And so this one, this one, the herb of choice was dill, dill weed. And it was good. Um, you know, chicken breast, um, dill weed, asparagus. And I cooked my noodles in broth so that it would absorb the flavor. So I had we had broth broth boiled noodles, egg noodles, and then we had asparagus in the chicken. So this is how we made asparagus chicken fricassee. For asparagus chicken fricassee, you will need one third cup all-purpose flour, one teaspoon salt, half teaspoon paprika, four boneless skinless chicken breast halves, two tablespoons vegetable oil, two cups chicken broth divided, one teaspoon dill weed, three quarter pound fresh asparagus trimmed and cut into thirds, hot cooked noodles if desired. In a bowl, combine flour, salt, and paprika. Set two tablespoons aside. Coat chicken with remaining flour mixture. In a large skillet, brown chicken in oil. Combine one and three quarter cups broth and the dill weed and pour over the chicken. Bring to a boil, reduce heat, cover and simmer for 15 minutes. Add the asparagus, cover and simmer eight minutes longer or until asparagus is almost tender. Meanwhile, combine remaining broth and reserved flour mixture until smooth. Remove chicken and keep warm. Stir flour mixture into asparagus mixture. Bring to a boil. Cook and stir for two minutes. Serve the chicken and sauce over the noodles if desired. This was a really delicious meal, and I hope you give it a try. And now it's time for Mama Bakes. And you know what I baked this time? I had, it was my turn to make a treat for the Bible study last Wednesday. And so, remember last time I finished reading Murder, She Knit by Peggy Earhart? Well... I made the autumn apple cake that was in the back of the book. So, so I was really happy with that. It was, it was good. It was, I have to say it was a little bit dry. Just a little, just a little bit dry. Um, I had a bowl of Cool Whip in the freezer. And I thawed it out. I thought it would be nice because it wasn't a frosted cake. It was a powdered sugar cake. And she had suggested to offer it with whipped cream or vanilla ice cream. So I thought, oh, well, I don't really have whipped cream. And I didn't want to make any or go buy any. But I knew I had a tub of Cool Whip. So I just thawed out the Cool Whip. Um, and I thought it was good. Um, the apples. She suggested chopping the apples or coarsely grating the apples. I grated them, but I don't, I don't know what coarse grating is. I just have, you know, I used a cheese grater, but not the fine cheese grater, just the standard shredded cheese. 
and I shredded them that way. So that was fine. Um, it was a good way to use up apples. I had I had a few apples in the bottom of the fridge that needed to be used up, and I used them, and I think it turned out good. Um, I used walnuts. Um, I chopped them up medium fine so that you could. You know, I don't I don't want them too fine. I, I, I wanted the crunch of an of a nut in there. But my girlfriends enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Scott thought it was okay. He thought it was kind of dry too. And I have forgot to tell I forgot to tell him that there was cool whip. <laughs> so he said, "You made me eat that bone dry cake." <laughs> it wasn't bone dry. <laughs> But I had to laugh because it was after he got done eating it that I said, Oh, I had Cool Whip for that. <laughs> I wasn't withholding information on purpose. I just forgot that I had it. And I, actually, I didn't notice he was eating it till it was too late. So that was funny. But here it is. This is the way I made autumn apple cake. For autumn apple cake, you will need four medium apples, two cups sugar, three cups flour, one teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon salt, one teaspoon cinnamon, one teaspoon nutmeg, one cup vegetable oil, two eggs slightly beaten, one teaspoon vanilla, one cup chopped walnuts, and powdered sugar. Core and peel apples, then coarsely grate the apples. Place apples in a small bowl and add sugar. Stir to coat and let sit for one hour. Sift the flour baking soda, salt, and spices together in a large bowl. Add oil, eggs, and vanilla and beat until well mixed. Stir in apples and walnuts. Pour mixture into a greased bunt pan and bake at 350 degrees for one hour. Cool for 10 minutes then turn out onto a serving plate. Cool completely. Before serving, dust with powdered sugar. Serve with Cool Whip, whipped cream, or ice cream. The cake was really delicious, and I hope you give it a try. And now it's time for Mama Reed. And I haven't finished any books, but I'm getting close. I'm I'm almost done. I'm almost done with Died in the Wool by Peggy Earhart. It's number two in the Knit and Nibble Mystery. Um, I I I've I've got just a little tiny bit left, and I'm enjoying it. It's I, I think I like this one better than the first one, Murder, She Knit. I think the Died in the Wool is more interesting. And it's about knitted, knitted, I'm not going to give the story away, but knitted aardvarks play a role in the murders. Knitted aardvarks? I'm not going to tell you any more than that, but... It's a cute little book, and this one I think I think I said last time it's got a um, strawberry shortcake recipe, but the strawberry shortcake season has gone by, and she says you have to use well she didn't say you have to use fresh strawberries yes it did two pints of fresh strawberries but i might make the shortcake maybe i'll make blueberry shortcake can you make 
blueberry shortcake. I've never heard of blueberry shortcake. I would make strawberry shortcake. Maybe I'll make them. I don't know. It's not too late, maybe. I might be able to find some fresh strawberries around. But we'll see. So I'm enjoying that. I'll be done with that by the next time. I'm also almost done with... I'm trying to... There we go. Uh, Fatal Distractions, Conquering Destructive Temptations by K. Arthur. And we're almost done. We finished Slothfulness. And now our final lesson will be on Greed. And we've, get, we've, we've been really, really um, helped by this because um, sometimes you don't realize, you know, that you're, that you're not um, living right until you go through a study like this. And then, you know, you go through pride and you think, oh, well, I saw myself in that one. And then you go to... Now, I really don't have a problem with anger. But, you know, I have trouble with pride. I have trouble with jealousy. I have trouble with gluttony. I have trouble with slothfulness. And chances are I have trouble with greed. Um, I don't think I have an anger issue. But, you know, I mean, I'm not going to say I never get angry. I do get frustrated. I was frustrated a little bit earlier. But I don't get angry. I don't get flat out angry. But I feel like this Bible study has been very, very helpful. So um, if you haven't done one, it's a six week no homework Bible study. Well, I wouldn't say it's no homework. It's calling itself a 40 minute Bible study. But these are taking us way longer than 40 minutes a piece. Um, but then we're doing a lot of discussion too. In it, and we're doing a lot of Bible reading and stuff. But we're preparing ahead of time. It says no homework, but we've been preparing ahead of time when we can. And just, you know, going through it. And so we just have one more left to go. And then we'll start on something else. And then I haven't started this yet. But I recently purchased a copy of Hadley Beckett's Next Dish by Bethany Turner. And the reason why I'm showcasing this book right now is because my friend Elizabeth has started a book club. And we're going to read this for our first book club um, get-together. Now, now, she has already told us that this is just a one-time thing just to see how it goes. So she's, she's not sure if she wants to do it on a monthly basis or if she, you know, maybe she wants to do it quarterly. I think that would probably be ideal, do a quarterly book club. I don't know. It's, it's her, it's her, it's her thing. And so, um, whatever she wants to do is fine. I'm on board. Well, we're going to read this book together. Um, we have to read it. And then we're going to meet on October 17th and talk about what we read. And so I'm looking forward to it. I'll be starting this on Thursday. That gives me, and I, I want to get it done in, before, before we meet. So that will give me plenty of time to get this book read. But it looks like a very interesting book. It says, Get Ready for a Heaping Helping of Humor, Romance and second chances. So, celebrity chef Maxwell Cavanaugh is known for many things. His multiple Michelin stars, his top-rated culinary channel show, To the Max, and most of all, his horrible temper. Hadley Beckett, host of the culinary channel's other top-rated show, At Home with Hadley, is beloved for her southern charm and for making her viewers feel like family. When Max experiences a very public temper tantrum and is sent packing, his only chance to get back on TV and in his public's good graces is to work alongside Hadley. As these polar opposites 
celeb chefs begin to peel away the layers of public persona and reputation, they will not only discover the key ingredients for getting along, but also learn the secret recipe for unexpected forgiveness, and maybe even love. In the meantime, hide the knives. <laughs> So I'm looking forward to starting this, and I'm, and I'm going to use my new bookmark that that she gave to me, that she made. So I'm very, I'm very excited to start that book. But that's it for Mama Reads, so let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Movie Mama. And I've only watched two movies recently. One night I was by myself and I watched The Emperor's New Groove from 2000 featuring the voices of David Spade and John Goodman and Eartha Kitt and it was fantastic. I remember watching it years ago and it was just, it was a funny, funny movie then and it was a funny movie this time. I really enjoyed that one. The other movie I watched just a couple of days ago was One for the Money from 2012. It featured Katherine Heigl and Jason O'Mara and Daniel Sanjata. And it was based on the Stephanie Plum novel of the same name, which I have read before. But I didn't remember hardly anything about it except for the shower scene. And yeah, they did the shower scene. But I, I didn't I didn't remember much about the story, and it was advertised as a comedy. But I don't remember it being very funny, of a book. But it was good. Um, Scott watched it with me while he was playing World of Warcraft, and he thought it was okay too. So that was a nice way to spend an afternoon. But that's it. Those are the only two movies that we saw. But. Uh, Maybe I'll watch some more movies now that I have a light that I can shine on my knitting and I can watch movies and knit at the same time. So, we'll see how that goes. So let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Miscellaneous Mama. So, not this past Sunday, but September 20th, I participated in the Cancer Perks Rock the Runway Fashion Show. It's a fundraiser. Um, it was a live virtual fashion show to raise money for the local cancer outreach organization called Cancer Perks. And I modeled my outfit from a boutique in Coal Camp, which is a town just south of Sedalia. Um, and, the, and the boutique is called Midmo Trends. I didn't know what the name of the shop was, and they didn't have a sign on their shop, but when I bought my outfit, I didn't have to buy it, but I, you know, I, I, I wanted to buy the outfit that, because I liked it enough to wear it. So I bought it, and they put a business card in the bag, and so it's Midmo Trends. That's the name of the shop. They didn't have a sign out front. I had trouble finding it when I went to go look for them. But they're, they're a nice couple of young ladies who are running a fashion boutique. And their fashions are fairly young, but I found something that was, you know, more, more my age appropriate, I guess. Um, but I watched the runway, and I was show some pictures and some video clips of my portion of the fashion show. It was pretty fun. And then, let's see, it was my birthday. I had my birthday last Thursday. I took a day off from work and my folks came over and we went out for supper at a local place called Little Bighorn. It's a steak place, steak and barbecue. And, uh, we had good food, and I didn't bake a cake for my birthday because I had just made that apple cake a couple of days before, and so there was still plenty of that left to eat. So I went to Dairy Queen, and I got myself a um, 
Oh, I didn't get myself. I got a ice cream log to share because there's a couple people in my family that don't like nuts. And so the apple cake had nuts in it. And so I wanted to have something that, you know, the nut, the people who don't like nuts had something to eat. So we got the Dairy Queen cake log and it was delicious. It had, it had some kind of a brownie in the center of it. And then the bottom half of it was chocolate soft serve, and the top of it was vanilla soft serve. And so you just sliced it up, and you ate it, and it was really, really good. So we had a nice family evening, and I was very pleased with my presence, and I was pleased with my family for wanting to spend the time with me. And now I'm 48. Well, that's it and I don't have a whole lot coming up um, that I can think of right off the bat we won't have our, our book club yet um, October 15th October 15th will be my next episode episode 16 so so we'll see what happens in the next couple of weeks and hopefully I'll have something fun to share during Miscellaneous Mama. So let's move on to the next segment. And now we've made it to the Mama is Done segment of the program. I want to thank you for spending your time with me today. I know that watching my program is a choice and I um, I am grateful that you have given me a slice of your valuable time. If you enjoyed what you saw today, I encourage you to click subscribe. All that does is make it more easy for you to find me the next time you watch my program. Um, I post videos on the first and third Thursday of every month. But if you click that notification bell, it'll automatically notify you whenever a video goes public. Um, if you want to ask me any questions, you can comment down below. Or you can send me an email at midmomama2 at gmail.com. I can be found on Instagram at midmomama1. Um, there, uh, I do have my account set on private but you know if you're someone who's yarny then I will be happy to follow you back and you can follow one another and be friends um what else I'm on Ravelry as Midmo Mama and I'm also on Stitch Zone as Midmo Mama and I heard of another one called Fiber craft. I'll have to look it up and talk about it next episode because I can't remember the name of it now. But there's another one that people are kind of gravitating towards, and I don't know if it's any good or not. I guess it used to be called My Unravelry, and I joined up My Unravelry right when um, a couple of years ago, but I had a hard time adjusting. So I kind of dropped out. I tried hum Humble Acres and I had a hard time adjusting to that one too. So I dropped out. But it's okay. We're, we're all trying to find our way, aren't we? So, and that's fine. Just do whatever you do. Whatever you do. Maybe, maybe, my, maybe YouTube is my community. Maybe you're my community. And, and that's good. I'd be happy to have community with you too. So, until next time, may God bless you. Bye.